Don't you just hate when you arrive at your campsite, you've set up your tent and set up everything around your tent and you're ready to kick back with a beer and all of a sudden you realize, oh no, we're either in the wrong place or we've done something wrong or we've set it up wrong. This video is all just about giving you a few hints and tips about how to set up your tent and your campsite correctly and above all safely so that you can maximize the best possible night's sleep in the wild. We're on nice flat ground here, but that's not always the case, obviously, when you're camping. So whether you're driving to your campsite or you're hiking in or whatever the case is, you don't really want to be camping on the top of a hill or a mountain if you can avoid it, just because if there's going to be any wind or rain or weather coming in. Likewise, you want to be right down in a valley. Ideally, if you can avoid it, it can get quite cold down in there during the night. If there's any kind of heavy rain up in the hills or up in the mountains, that all that rain is going to come down into the valley. It could get quite wet. In particular, to note where the wind is going to be coming from. Check the direction of the wind wind because you want to be setting up your tent so the strongest part of the tent is facing the wind always you don't want really a side on or a weak part of the tent facing the wind that's when you get the wall coming in on top of you during the night make sure the stronger part which is usually where there's more poles etc that'll make sure you have a much nicer and more comfortable night's sleep this is a dome tent, Crew Duo Max. So we're going to set this up first. Um, then I'll talk you through the steps of, of staking it out, etc. It's quite a simple freestanding tent. So let's get into that and we can talk a little bit more after we have it standing. Now, we're going to go about setting up our tent. We're camping here in quite a flat area, ready to set up the tent. This is a dome tent, freestanding, so it's nice and easy to move it around, find that nice spot. Uh, we're facing the back of the tent to the west, even though there's no real wind here today. I like to make sure the strong part of the tent is facing into the possible inclement weather and our prevailing wind comes from the west. We're quite nicely sheltered over there, yet still far enough away from the trees that we're not going to be hit by any branches uh, coming off. So really, really important to stake out tents properly. By that, I mean staking out all the corners of the tents properly, staking out all the guy lines properly. But before I start, I'm going to close the doors. If you don't close the doors when you're staking out the tent, it'll be stretched into the wrong position. So close your doors, finish staking out your tent and you've it spread out properly that you'll, it'll be nice and easy to zip the doors closed and open afterwards. If you're on rough or really really wet ground you might want to consider an actual second footprint underneath but here we're not using it it's not necessary. Start off with the floor because that gives it its shape, gives it its footprint. Always put out all the guy lines. So here we have the Crew Core, which is an airbeam tent. It is a dome tent, but it's an airbeam tent. So we're going to set this up and we'll talk a little bit about the bits and pieces to note when you're using airbeam afterwards. Okay, so just as I finish setting up here, a couple of other things to remember. Again, same thing floor first and now we're doing the the guy lines around the side when you're setting up just make sure that there's nothing underneath the tent so that could be stones that could be twigs anything that could penetrate the the floor of the tent if you're in any doubt about it you should really have a footprint underneath they call it a footprint it's just a tarp it's an extra layer to protect the floor of the tent as i've already kind of mentioned as well flat ground is absolutely crucial the last thing you want is waking up in the middle of the night and you find yourself not able to sleep because you're sliding off of your your mattress so here we have the crew core which is an airbeam tent um, very very nice and easy to set up you basically pump up each of the tubes in this case it's in three spots it, you could probably put this tent up in and get it all pumped up in between five and ten minutes depending on uh, how energetic you're feeling the back of the tent in this case facing any possible inclement weather as we said there is going to be a little bit more bend with air beam so they're not going to be as rigid as aluminium frame or steel frame tents so we just want to again make sure and double down that all guy lines are always out Okay, so we have our tunnel tent standing. Uh, this is the crew at Tri, it's a three per person tunnel tent. You'll see there's a little bit of a different setup, not least because it's handier with two people. If you have two people, it definitely is easier. It's very doable with one person, as you can see. You can just stake out the back of it, but if you have the second pair of hands, it helps you move the tent both forward in that accordion fashion. Most tunnel tents will follow that design. So just doable with one, but better with two. Tunnel tents versus dome tents and freestanding tents. And you can get tunnel tents with airframes as well, by the way. Um, so air versus aluminium, 
etc. These are aluminium uh, poles on this tent. That, that's kind of a different discussion. I'm not going to get into it. There are strengths and weaknesses. We'll do another video on, on that. But for this, this is a tunnel tent with an aluminium frame. And as I said, most tunnel tents will follow this type of design. Crew a try, but most of them will follow the same principle. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, finish out the staking of the tent. And then after that, we'll be into the vents and all the intricacies on the inside of the tent and we'll check back in then. This crew a try comes with its own insulated interior, so its own cocoon if you like. Using insulation in a tent is, is good for a number of reasons. Number one, the wall isn't going to perform very well of any tent um, thermally, so this helps you stay warmer inside or cooler when that's required. It also dampens noise and dampens light coming into the tent. So all in all, leads to a much more comfortable night's sleep. So uh, this one is built into the try. You can get supplementals so that you can add. Uh, the crew color, for instance, you can add into any tent and it's standalone. Okay, so there you have some really important pointers to remember when you're picking out a spot for your tent, when you're putting the tent up and when you're taking the tent down. One more thing when you're taking the tent down, if it comes down wet or damp, make sure you put it up when you go home to dry it out, otherwise it becomes moldy, unusable again. Okay, put the tent up, dry it out if it's put down wet. So if you like these videos, please subscribe to the channel, uh, hit the like button, all the usual stuff. And if you have any specific questions or comments, put them in the comments section. And if you have any kind of parts, let's say, of the camping procedure, the camping process that you'd like us to create a video about, put that in the comments below as well. We'll be monitoring it. So until next time, this is Derek from Krua and Loke behind the camera.